Welcome to this first video in a series which will be a complete programming course for metal punching machines. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications every time a video is released. Let's start with an introduction to the punch programming series for Amata machines. This series will cover G-code programming for punching machines. We will have separate videos for each G-code, which should make things easy to follow and also look up as a reference in the future. The goal of this series is to give both the newcomer and the experienced programmer or operator a reference on how a G-code program is constructed and what each line actually does in a program. Let's begin by understanding some basics. There have been many models of Amata punching machines through the years, but the basic concept has remained the same. The raw sheet of material is placed on the table and is pushed against the clamps and the gauge block. This is the zero zero point or origin of the sheet. The clamps are then closed and will hold the material during the punching process. The table moves in two directions, X, and Y. There is a turret where the tools are stored, which turns to place the wanted tool under the striker. Each tool is inserted in a station in the turret. The punch is inserted in the upper turret and the corresponding die in the die base. Each station has its own station number or T number. Let's begin writing programs. Each program is made up of three sections. First, the control must know the size of the machine table. This tells the control how far the striker is to the origin point, or zero zero point, before any movement is done. Second is the heart of the program. This is where all the punching is done. And lastly, is the program end, where the sheet is brought back to the origin point and the program is reset. G92 command is used at the beginning of each program. This command indicates to the control the position of the origin in relation to the punch center. Once the control reads this line, it will know where the zero zero point of the sheet is. The G92 is a machine constant. It depends on the machine model table size and therefore it never changes. Make sure you use the correct G92 for your machine. Usually, after the G92, there is also a G06 code that is used on machines with RAM control, but we will look at that in another video. G50 command is entered on a line by itself at the end of the program. This command moves the sheet back to the origin point, as specified in the last G92 statement, and signals to the control that the program has ended. The cursor goes back to the first line of the program and is ready to be run again with another sheet of material. Any offsets like G93 or G98 are cancelled. We'll look at these G codes later. The coordinates are specified with X and Y. X is usually the axis along the clamps and Y is perpendicular to it. Precision can be up to one thousandth of an inch or one hundredth of a millimeter. With all that, we can start to write our first program. We'll be using PunchSim software to write our programs throughout the series. You can get more info on the PunchSim simulation software at cncsoft.com. We have our part trying with our tool list. In this example, we are only punching holes. In other words, the sheet size is the same as the part size and there is no need to punch around the part. Let's ignore these lines at the top as they are used by the punch sim software to show the material size, the clamp position, and the tool list. 
These will be ignored by the machine control. Please note that anything between parentheses is considered a comment and is ignored by the machine. Let's say that our machine is a Pega 357 and therefore the G92 for our machine is X72.000 and Y50.000. Now let's punch the half inch holes. Let's start from the top right of the part. X20, Y12. And the tool is in station 266. So the turret will turn and bring station 266 under the striker. The material will move to bring the point X20, Y12 under the striker. Once everything is in place, the striker will punch a hole with the tool in that station. The next hole is X20, Y8. Notice that since it's the same tool, I don't need to write the tool station again. The machine will use the same station it is currently in and wait for the sheet to be moved until the point X20, Y8 is under the striker. Again, one hole will be punched at that point. The last of the half inch holes is at Y4. Since the X value has not changed from the previous position, I do not need to write it again. The machine keeps in memory the last X, Y, and T used until the program is reset. Next is the 3 inch round, X12, Y8, T201. The last two holes are with the 2 inch square tool, X4, Y4, T255, and Y12. That's it. We have nothing else to punch, so let's finish this program with a G50. Let's see the simulation of our program in Punch Sim and verify if everything is correct. The first program is complete and everything is perfect. We would be ready to send this program to the machine and punch our part. Before we end this video, here are some general things to keep in mind when programming. Start punching on the upper right hand corner of the sheet in order to decrease the time of approach towards the turret. Punch the smaller diameter holes first, then larger holes, and finish with notches and forming. The forming operations should preferably be the last operations performed. The movements of X and Y axis are generally faster than changing the station in the turret. It is therefore preferable to punch all holes of a particular tool before switching to another station of the turret. That's it for now. See you soon in the next video as we continue our punch programming course series. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications every time a video is released.